Hi guys, and welcome to Bomb Anime. It's your girl, Rika. A big boy Summer here, finally bringing you season four of Dan Machi, or the weirdly titled, Is It Wrong to Get Girls in the Dungeon? Oh I my don't know. God. Who cares? It's Dan Machi. No! <laughs> It's Dan Machi. It's always been Dan Machi. I just thought the English title was bullshit. To me. No, no. Look, guys, you don't know this because I always edit it out. But no matter what, no matter what the anime title, Big Boy Sama gets it wrong every time. Every time. Oh, is it wrong to pick up girls in the dungeon? That's it. Even though he only tried to pick up one girl. But anywho, I've been so excited for this. Guy Ruka, take us away. Okay, so I really like the way they gave me their recap. A lot of animes for me get this wrong because I do not want to sit here just re-watching what I've already watched. But they didn't just do that. First of all, they gave us a nice, cool, transparent film on top of it. They hurried it along. They sped through that B, showed us highlight, and Hestia was saying something else. So yes, I really appreciated that. And then they did the same thing when they ended the show out, when they were entering the dungeon, and they basically showed us multiple little battles that they were having, which made it feel like a really great technique because what I'm thinking is that episode two will start on a, yeah, a common note inside of the dungeon. But because they've done this ending bit, it's gonna make it feel as if much more time has passed and they've already been through a lot without them dragging it out in the episode itself. I appreciate Aisha. I think Aisha, <laughs> look, 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 look. Pervert. I don't, I don't normally sit for 2D characters, but Aisha is something else, bro. She knows what she is, isn't it? And she uses it to her advantage. She's a very skilled warrior and she forces her way through because she's very strong and I love that character. To be honest, all these characters trying to get stronger as well is a great way to transition into the next stage because if you're playing any RPG or MMORPG or any of the variants, you know that there needs to be grinding and there needs to be levels and there needs to be techniques learned. And the fact that they've all been playing to their strengths, I'm looking forward to this season like I do every other season of Dan Machi. She does feel very much like a high class escort. That's why I like her. That's the vibe that she gives because everything that she does is quite suggestive but she's also strong. You can tell that she's very confident and she seems kind of above it all. She's not pompous about it but she does seem like she's just I'm better than you, like in every way. She looks like she'd be very educated. She can fit in many different roles. And of course, she's so overpowered. So she's a character that a lot of people would really like. Yes, a lot of us do. A lot of us really, really like Aisha. I also like that we've got this continuation with Welf's character. Obviously, when he first came on the scene, he was not making any kind of weaponry and he would only sort of make armor. And even that he was just, it was just getting thrown to the side. No one was really dealing with him. But now we've got him making weapons, not just for Belle, but he's also making it for other people. And the, what, what would it be? A battle axe? That battle axe was yeah, I, so impressive. Oh, the axe is sick. It was really nice. You can tell that it's going to be great. And when he gave Bell his his uh, weapon at first, I was like, "What? Why is he giving him an ice pick?" <laughs> <laughs> but when he actually unsheathed it, you could see it a little bit better. It's made out of unicorn horn, which is why I think they've given it that really thin appearance. At some angles, it actually looks a bit like a unicorn horn itself. Is that what it looks like? <laughs> it looks what like did you think it looked I, like? I, I, a marital aid of some sort. Oh my god, that sharp! Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? If it vibrates, it's okay, isn't it? Oh my god, no, oh. no! Back to Dan Machi. In this whole episode, we didn't see Lady Wallerstein or Welfestein or whatever her name is. We didn't see her at all, except for one little cameo shot. And this whole thing started because Belle wanted to be with her. Now he's got a new goal, which is to become stronger to protect his friends. And him becoming level four. I still don't know what his secret power is. I really want to know. Hestia, let the cat out of the bag, woman. I want to know what it is. Don't spoil it if, you want, if you're reading the manga, guys. I don't want to know that way. I want to know through the anime. So, like Ruka said, when they showed the recap of sorts in a more fun way, I really connected with that because every other anime is doing it. This is what we did last season. One episode completely wasted. We actually moved forward with the story. We saw that Elena, the, the elf girl at the guild, she is actually falling in love with the progression of Belle. And this guy's got more women trying to get him than anyone else. And yet he seems pretty clueless at that sense so I don't know it's, it's pretty funny to see what might happen this season he might actually get a girl 
But as far as Wallace Dean is concerned, I find her really, really boring. I don't want him to end up with her. She's a snooze fest. I know that she's strong and everything, but like, God, I just don't care about her character. They haven't done anything to make us feel as if she really belongs. Seriously, like there's been more character progression with some random members of her party. Yep. Like, come on, please, let it go. And I actually liked the scene with him and Aina in the Adventurous Guild. It shows that Bell is not just improving his physical skills, which is what we've been seeing, but he's actually doing research. And he said that he had been spending time with her getting to learn different things about the floors, what to expect on the floors, the different types of monsters that are gonna be there so that he can keep his party safe. So I really liked seeing that aspect of things. It shows that Bell is more of an all-rounder, although looking at him, he can be really underestimated because he's got that small voice, he's in this small guild, and he's caused such a ruckus so much of the time. I don't know how he could look favorably from his window at the city rebuilding all of the mess that he helped to create. I would be hiding. <laughs> I know that you kind of saved the day, but you also damaged the whole city, destroyed businesses, ruined houses, like people died. It was a lot. People hated you for a while and you're just like, yay, I'm up for my next mission. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of deep when you think of it like that, ain't it? Okay, look, 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 look. Bell wants to be the hero. And he reached his goal, ain't it? He, he caused the problem to solve the problem. So, obviously, man is a hero, in it? Not the villain, because he did the last thing, innit? It's the last thing you do that makes you, innit? <laughs> <laughs> no, saying that he'd be a villain is going too far because... Bell is nowhere near a villain. No. He did help to create the mess, but it really wasn't his fault. He had no idea that uh, that Minotaur was going to go and do what he did. And he did the best that he could in the situation that what, he had. losing? You're getting his ass busted. Well, he was only a level three oh, at the time. Oh, oh, okay, hero. Okay, my bad. <laughs> Alright, Bell, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be clowning you because... <laughs> Because you are pretty sick. And it's nice seeing him lose a big fight yeah. as well. And seeing his progression from a loss. Yeah, when Hestia said that, um, Ruka was like, what the f***? I should be level infinity. <laughs> Remember when he Yeah, like, he, he did all that. And you're saying, oh, he did it. It wasn't, it wasn't because he won. It was because he lost and his um, frustration sure. tipped him over the edge. Mate, I should be, like, the best level character in any game I play if it's based off of frustration. Are you mad? <laughs> But instead, you get a controller throw through your screen. <laughs> but all jokes done, I think they did a brilliant job with this episode. Like, they really furthered the story along as well. And even though it was a short space of time, the whole episode happened between an evening, well, a day and an evening. And we moved through. Everyone was preparing. People were learning. And it basically caught to the strengths of Dan Machi. Dan Machi is one of the animes that deals really, really well with character development except for Lady Wallerstein. And you actually get invested in these characters. Like, it's been, what, a whole year since we've seen it? And I feel like I've just come back to seeing old friends. And if an anime can make you come back year after year, over and over again, I think they're doing a really good job. And I think they smashed this first episode, personally. Yeah, first episode was great. And then we know that we're about to enter into one of the most dangerous parts of the dungeon, or, well, maybe not the most dangerous part of the dungeon, but, there's going to be a lot of danger awaiting them and it's going to get savage out here. So everybody prepare for that. Side note, you know that fireball, firebolt, <laughs> that's not a spell. Firebolt is not the name of that spell. Because what he did was unleash Inferno right there, bro. What the hell was that? Well done for growing, bro. Because, nah, you couldn't do that before and now you're just burning like beehives. So on that note, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And if you made it this far, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Peace.